guys, welcome back to the off garage here in sunny, hot Australia. Look at this beautiful Easter weather we have. Pure sunshine, 28 degrees. It's not too hot actually, perfect weather. Thanks for tuning in and it is so good to see you back here on the channel. So in today's video, we are finally doing it. We are finally installing the first battery bank here in our battery shelf. Um, I want to start with the top shelf because I am old and I can reach this far better than the bottom one. I don't even know what I thought about putting a battery shelf so low. It, uh, that is impossible to... I have no idea how to install this one yet. So that's why... Um, let's start with the top shelf. And I want to put the 304 ampere hour battery bank in this position there. Um, this is for the reason because we have our supply up here. There's our main circuit breaker up here. And all the load and all the solar charge controllers are connected from this way onto our bus bar down there, right? So for this reason, we will use more power out of the first battery bank, which is closest to our connection points. A little bit less from this battery and even lesser from the bottom battery here. That's why I want to go with the largest capacity battery here at the top. And then we put the other 280 ampere hour battery in the bottom floor. Once I have figured out how to reach this without breaking my back. Ah, that will be insane. Okay, I think I have prepared everything. We've got the BMS here so far, which we have prepared yesterday and soldered. We've got our dual terminals here. We've got a DIN rail here. We've got our small little bus bar connections. 35 by 8 ring lugs, straight and angled, bended. We've got our batteries here and 35 millimeter cable. This is pretty much it. Okay, I would say let's get started. So I have just um, put two batteries in here in the shelf to see how this all works out. Because I want to do it the same setup as this shelf here. This all works perfectly fine here. And I don't want to change too much on this setup actually. So this is our last battery row or the first battery row. And then we've got our small bus bar down here. Now in between these two rows here, here's a fairly large gap. I can really easily poke my hand in between here. I'm using the standard bus bars up here for that. I think I have shown you this in the other video already so if we come a little bit closer here and put the standard bus bar on it and move them as far as possible together so we've got like it's like a 20 millimeter gap here in between perfect for cooling and I can use the standard bus bar the alternative would be to move them really close together the good thing is you cannot make a short anymore with these bus bars <laughs> because the terminals are so far apart now it is not possible to short them out or I need to drill another hole in here if I want to have them closer together cut this side off drill another hole and that's pretty much it and then I can mount them closer together but I am actually really happy with this gap in between and this would all fit as it is. I think I'll go with that. This, this setup will give us maximum cooling here in between the battery cells. And then we have the usual two millimeter, three millimeter gap in between the cells here as well. Let's just do it. So I use this one bus bar here to straighten up my cells so they're all in the same distance to each other. This is all good now. Alright, you can see it. There's a little gap. And we've got the massive gap in between the cells now. I like this actually very much here. That is pretty good. Alright, second battery in the shelf. Wow, it looks amazing. Not bad. So 
So, and here we have the main components of our battery compartment again. Got the BMS here, and then we connect all our balance leads to our terminal block over here, which goes to our battery, and we are pretty much done. That's it. Half an hour maximum. Oh, it feels so good to cut, drill and saw and tap again. Doing something with your hand. It's amazing. Ah, this pure do-it-yourself smell. It's simply the best. So I covered the shelf underneath with a cloth so all the debris from drilling and tabbing doesn't fall onto our cabling here. Yeah, it's still clean. Nice. So, and this is pretty much everything we need to do. Drilling five holes, mounting these two terminals and the terminal block here and then BMS sits here, the BMS will not be mounted, it just sits here. Cables here, cables there. And we're almost done. It's another 15 minutes or so. So, and as you can see here from this shot here, we have exactly the same layout on the top shelf as we have in the middle shelf. Small terminal bus bars on both sides of the BMS and the terminal block for our balance leads here. So this is exactly the same as we have up here. And this basically gives us the flexibility to quickly replace a BMS here for one battery bank because it's just connected to one of the one of the little bus bars on this side and as well as on the load side over there. Then we can disconnect all our balance leads here, put another BMS in or a balancer and connect this back to the terminal block and we are done. We don't need to touch any of the terminals of the batteries at all. Yeah, nah, I was, I was a bit hoping it would be enough to have just an angled ring lock here to, uh, to connect to the terminal here straight away, but that's of course not enough. So we need some kind of a link, what I have done down here as well, with a bus bar just bend it and then we connect our cables here in a straight way down there on both sides, positive and negative. We will do exactly the same over here as well. Yeah, something like this. So I just um, filed this hole out here to suit an M8 bolt because you cannot use a drill bit or something to, to drill these holes off here. It will be very ugly. The drill bit gets stuck and jammed and destroys your whole hole then. So it's better to use a little half round file like this and just file it out. So it's a perfect hole now for an M8 bolt and this will be the connection for our ring terminal. Uh, there we go. And we have our connection links again. Just bend it one of the normal standard bus bars. And now we just need a piece of cable in between here. Pretty much the same as below here. And then we've got one link done already. So and here at the top we have our M3 tabbed connection for our balance leads for the most positive and the most negative. Oh well, guys, that's the first crimp for a long, long, long time. It feels so good. And as always, I'm crimping twice. The length of these ring lugs just allow it. And of course, it gives you a better connection between cable and ring lug. Okay, let's see if it would fit. Ah, 
it's a it's a tiny bit too long yeah a tiny bit too long okay no big deal okay we are talking all the connections with four newton meters again So I've got the link ready from the circuit breaker to our small bus bar terminal situation down here. Yeah, and this is always tricky because I cannot really get in with the torque wrench in the circuit breaker and I need to... Well, I've got this piece of Allen key here and I use a 5mm socket so as an extension and then we can get into the terminal of the circuit breaker. Six newton meter is the torque for the circuit breaker. So, like this. Okay, done, done. We did it. Okay, I'll leave this all loose because we need to do this again for the positive here as well. And the positive goes in like this, corner, corner bend, then, then, cable is too short, come on, and all the way up, up here, and we cut it exactly here, here, then we cut it here, and here this little isolator, sliding in, there we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is in, yes, it is in, we got it. All right, and this concludes, well, this concludes our power cabling so far. We just need to connect the BMS between here and here, and we are basically done. So next step would be to put all our bus bars on top of the batteries, connect all the terminals together. Don't close the magic loop. And then we have to connect them to the balance cable and connect them all to our terminal block down here. As a last step, we connect our BMS balance cables on the other side of the terminal block. So this will be a task for tomorrow because it is already, yep. The next day. Good morning and welcome back. Uh, welcome back to the same video as yesterday. Well, I thought it's a different video. It's not. It's the same video. Uh, well, forget it. Welcome back. So in today's video, we wanna we wanna final we wanna finalize our top battery shelf here, mounting all the bus bars and connecting the balance leads, and then then as a final step, connect the BMS as well. So I have to make a lot of balance leads now, which start with a three millimeter ring terminal, a five amp fuse a piece of cable and a ferrule at the end to connect to our terminals then. Some people have told me that it's not necessary to use a ferrule in these clamp terminals here because we've got these clamp mechanisms inside and you just push the button here with a screwdriver and then put your cable in, release the button and it clamps in your cable perfectly fine. But I want to show you something. So with these terminals here, you usually have the button here at the top and you push the button in and you can see it presses on the spring mechanism and then you feed your cable into this channel here and it clamps the cable against this bus bar over here and here and here. On this side here I have removed this cover so you can see what's actually happening inside. And as you can see the actual spring mechanism only of a piece of metal which pushes against the bus bar. See that? Okay, let's take a piece of wire Okay, so with one hand, okay, let's open the mechanism, feed the cable in as you would do, like this, and then release the spring. And here you can see what I think is a bit of a problem. It basically, the spring here pinches the cable only on one location. So it presses the cable against the bus bar just over here where they touch. And you can see the bottom of the cable actually bends away from the bus bar, so does the top. Yeah, here you can see it again. 
See, this is how it looks like inside the terminal. There's only one connection point between the cable and the bus bar here. So I have now crimped a cable with a ferrule and we do the same again. So opening the contact and feeding in the cable with the ferrule and release the spring. And here you can see the ferrule, of course, is much tougher than just a single copper cable and stays straight. The spring presses the whole ferrule against the bus bar and we've got the contact area starting from here, from the top of the bus bar, all the way down to the end of the ferrule. And even if you move the cable around, it stays connected perfectly fine to the bus bar. So we get a much larger contact area from the cable to the bus bar with a ferrule. And that's why I prefer using ferrules even in these clamping terminals. And here's a comparison. You can see again the cable which we just used gets pinched over there at this location. And here the bottom of the cable actually points away from the bus bar and the top as well. And it's only connected via one little contact area to the actual contact inside the terminal. While here we have a full length of contact area. Yeah, well guys, this is just what I found again, <laughs> because I, I know usually uh, manufacturers tell you you don't need to use ferrules in these terminals. They work just fine with cables and they may do, but as you have seen, the contact area is very, very limited. Also, if you move the cable around, like in a mobile situation, it can happen that the cable actually breaks exactly where the spring mechanism pushes the cable against the bus bar. And then the cable will just fall off or single strains of the cable come off and you reduce your overall size of the cable then. This all does not happen if you use a ferrule. So I will go ahead and use the ferrules here because I have them, I love them, they are clean, they are tidy and they make good contact with these terminals. Well, I definitely cannot use this terminal anymore. So I sacrificed it for the sake of science. That's why it has these black marks all over it. So, and this is basically how the whole cable looks like. We've got the three millimeter ring terminal here, then a five amp fuse, got the connection to the one millimeter cable that is uh, this size in gauge, a little bit of heat shrink over it. And then on the other side, I've got a one millimeter ferrule, which goes into our terminal and this side connects to our bus bar. So just in case, just in case the fuse blows, I can remove the heat shrink here and solder another fuse in between here and then we are done. Well, some people suggested to use terminals with integrated fuses already, which, um, which I have here as well. And they basically open like this and you can see there's a 10 amp fuse in these ones here. I link them down below, you can order them in all kinds of fuses here, but they are easy to replace just like this. And it goes back in, closing this one, done. The downside and why I'm not using these ones is they have actually screw terminals and not push terminals. And it's only a one-to-one -one terminal and I have, and these ones here are actually twin terminals. They've got one connection to, the, to our battery cells and then one to the BMS and one to a balancer or an, another device we can connect to. I'll link them all down below and on my website as well. Um, we will use these ones here for another project I have planned. So I have already ordered them, but I won't use them for the battery shelf. There we go. And then we feed the cable over here and down here. And it goes, well, you can't see it. There. And it comes from here and it goes to our first terminal. Don't worry about the cables. We fix them up later with Velcro and make this nice and beautiful. Okay, I'll keep going. I've got another 16 of them to do. Wow, look at this cable mess here. That is crazy. Okay, uh, let me beautify this.
Yeah, guys, um, I actually wanted to connect this battery here to our main system and start using it, but um, I can't. I used the Helltech BMS here to connect everything up and everything is wired as it should be, but the BMS does not work. It gives me some error messages here on the display. One battery is even missing and the app shows some weird behavior where cell voltages are completely missing. Now, of course, I checked all the connectors here several times and everything seems to be fine. So for the time being, I think I'm going to disconnect this BMS here and we go with another BMS just to get us going here. And I have to wait for Helltech to come back to me. The full Helltech BMS saga will be in another video, in a separate video. And because I haven't heard back from them and it is weekend, I just want to set up another BMS here and get the whole system working so we can continue our test with the battery and get this all connected correctly. Helltech, shame on you. Okay, guys, <laughs> I have now installed the Overkill Solar BMS, which um, Maddie has sent over here from Canada. So thanks again, Maddie, for sending this one. It's a lifesaver right now. Well, the alternative would have been to install the second QUCC BMS with a relay in here, but I have promised to send this one to Joe in California. So it is already packed up and ready to go. The Overkill Solar BMS, it will be. I've connected everything, checked all the voltages here again. Maddie has put in all these labels here on all the balance cables. Well, she's a girl. They do that. Talked all the connections with four Newton meters and now we can turn it on because this one comes with a switch. Let's see what happens. That's good, nothing so far. The um, Bluetooth is dark, but I think it only flashes when you actually connect. And it uses the Xiao Xiang BMS. Um, could be this one here. This is the only one which hasn't got a name. Okay, let's try it. Yep, Bluetooth comes on, blue light. See, that's how it should be. You connect the BMS and it works. See, this is what I like. Two hundred, no, 304 we have. Uh, cycle capacity, 304. Confirm. And bam, we are in. There we go. All 16 cells. Some of them could be very low because I have tested them. Yeah, I think number 14 and 12 could be that I've capacity tested these two cells, but I haven't recharged them to the same level. I don't really care. The BMS should take care of that. Okay, let's have a quick look at the parameter overview. 3.65, uh, 2.5. I don't care about these ones. Charge over current 100 amps. Discharge over current 110. That's all right. Balance turn on voltage. We set this one to a 3.45 as always. And balance precision, one millivolt. Okay, all the rest. See, it clearly says it's a JBD SP25S003. It's not branded to overkill solar like Aolithium has done with their app. Okay. Everything seems to be totally fine here. Whoa, 86 millivolt deviation. And we've got all four temperature sensors here. Okay, so, well, I guess the next step would be to turn on our circuit breaker. I want to make a last measurement here, polarity, just just to make really sure we are, we are good, right? We are good. We are good, but I just want to check it again. So we check here on the output of the circuit breaker. We've got positive 52.3 and we check here on the input as well, uh, positive 52.3. So we've got the, exactly the same voltage. That is funny because I was hoping for a big inrush current from our 50% charged batteries here to our, well, 30% or something charged battery here. Obviously, there won't be anything happening at all. Okay, shall we turn it on? Three, two, one. Watch the app. Ah, it is on. What do we get? Nothing. <laughs> we are discharging with 1.3 amps. That is all we get. Okay, there's no inrush current. Nothing is happening. Okay, we've got battery number one, battery number two, and the old battery number three here now in parallel. 
that's a lot of ampere hours. But we will disconnect the old battery from the circuit breaker because the other battery bank goes in here soon. And then we need to lie down on the concrete floor to get this all connected here. I don't know what I actually thought to build such a low battery shelf here. That is totally stupid. Okay, so I turn off the JK BMS now. Discharge off. Okay, let's turn off the old battery as well. There we go. We turn the discharge off here. <laughs> Why is he complaining? <laughs> and now the whole system runs from our new battery minus 5 amps we have. Right, I guess we should put some load on it. But um, cell number 12 and 14, they are probably only at a charge to 10% or so. Uh, we can't do it for too long. But it should be enough to get a good idea about the busbar connections here. So we do a little infrared camera test and see if we can observe any hotspots here on the battery. And also we have to remember this is only 100 amp BMS. So that's the maximum we can pull around 5 kilowatt from this battery. So let's do it. So as always, we're using the Tesla as our load, uh, charging with 12 amp at the moment. And I just want to have a look. This is 64 amps. We have to keep an eye on 12 and 14. They're already at 3.1, okay. Crank this one up to 14. So that we can get a little bit closer. I think we can go full power, right? It's ramping up now. Yeah, around 80 amps, I think it is. Let's um, confirm this quickly here. Yeah, 80 amps. All right, let's do the um, finger test again. <laughs> this is all, no, he can't see anything, man. This is all torqued with four Newton meters, only four Newton meters. No, everything seems to be totally fine at the moment. BMS is fine. No problem. Okay, let's get the infrared camera and see what's going on. Okay, and here we have a look at our battery from the top. You can see the uh, reflection in the back. That's me. And so far, cables. Ooh. This is the 8 gauge wire here. It vibrates. You can feel a vibration from the current. This is the only cable which heats up at the moment. Which is the 2 times 8 gauge wire. That's our circuit breaker. Yeah, 29 degrees, that's fine. And so far, main positive on the left, main negative on the right. 29 these are all the terminal connections reflection in the background but all the terminals seem to be fine can we see something here not 27 it's even colder okay leave it running for oh hang on what's going on here ah reflection reflection 27, all good. It's all good. Okay, we are pulling 81 amps. The two other batteries are turned off. And we need to keep an eye on 12 and 14 here. They seem to be very, very low. But yeah, so far, no big deal. Okay, let's leave it running for a couple of minutes. And then we do another check with the infrared camera. But so far, everything seems to be fine. Almost as expected. Nice. Oh yeah, the BMS gets warm now. 80 amps. Okay, we are 2.85 volts now with cell number 14 here and I think I'll stop the test now. It's running for 12, 13, close to 15 minutes now on 80 amps. And let's have another look with the infrared camera and then we turn off the charging of the vehicle. Okay, let's start with the BMS itself here. We've got 40 degrees on these cables there. A little bit of heat over here. 
This one is a bit hotter than the bottom one. Warmer, so that there's no concern. It just looks intense, but it's really like only 30, 60 degrees or so. Okay, so BMS and cabling. And let's have a look at the battery and the terminals. Obviously here, main positive, negative. And then we've got reflections. Yeah, there you can see temperatures are catching up. 27 degrees. Cool. It is cool. Reflections on top of the bus bars. Yeah, interesting are really the terminals here. And if we can see any candles inside these batteries. But they're all looking perfectly fine. All terminals, bus bars are all cold. Nice. Okay, let's stop charging before the battery is completely empty and then we turn on the other batteries again and see if we can get an inrush current here into this battery. Ooh, that was close. 2.6 volts, <laughs> cell number 40. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. I probably need to recharge this one manually a little bit, 12 and 14. When we charge this battery here, they will be totally out of balance. They are probably like 30% lower than all the other batteries from my testing. But yeah, anyway, let's um let's um let's turn on the other okay let's go in the JK PMS and go into the controls and turn on turn on discharge. Okay, it's on. Let's see what we get 41 amps going from one battery into the other. It's tapering off quickly. Yeah, and this will recharge our battery a little bit. Actually turn off this battery here altogether, the old battery, and turn off the circuit breaker. There we go. So we can um, safely disconnect it. And now the whole installation is only running from these two batteries. Yeah, smart shunt. Now obviously I need to tell the smart shunt now that we have an increased capacity again. The battery, see it sits on 560 ampere hours, but we now have, uh, we now have, yeah, we now, we now have uh, 584. So battery and 584. Okay. Obviously the state of charge is not precise anymore now because we have increased the capacity, but this one just stays the same. And to be honest, this battery may be at 40, 44% or something, but this one is not even balanced. Some of the cells are around 28 or so, and two of the cells are even at almost 0% now. And here the overkill solar again. Yeah, it gets charged with about 15 amps still. And we turn off the charge button here and see if it actually turns off. Yep. Yeah. It goes to zero, charging back on, 17 amps. Okay guys, I would say that's it for today. <laughs> we have successfully installed the second or the first battery here on the shelf now. Had a bit of trouble with the Heltec BMS. I replaced it with the Overkill Solar Medi has sent me and this is all working fine. It has passed the infrared camera test so far. Well, once these three batteries are installed and I pull full power here, like six, seven kilowatts with these two inverters, this means we will have like 30, 40 amps per battery bank. I, I still like the idea to have a 200 amp BMS here. So actually one battery bank can carry the full load of both inverters, just in case we have to take them offline for maintenance or balancing or something. So this was the whole purpose of this concept here with the circuit breakers and the three levels of battery banks. Okay guys, so far this video from tonight. I hope I will hear back from Heltec about their BMS and how it actually works. And then I would like to replace the Overkill Solar with the Heltec BMS test this one a little bit but again this will not be the one which stays there in the in the battery shelf i want to test something else there and i probably have something in mind now i'll tell you i'll tell you in a future video
Okay guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all your great support here on the channel. I really appreciate everything you are doing. Not only the donations, I mean, I like them too, but no, everyone is actually supporting the channel here in a great way. Watching, commenting, liking, this is all very much appreciated. So thank you very much for that. And until the next video, guys, you stay charged and safe. And thank you again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. There's one missing.